Hello, welcome to Beth Roars, where we look at your favourite singers to find out what makes them them. I get so many requests that it is impossible to fulfil them all, but every now and again I get a request and I'm like, yes, I have to do that. Now, I particularly love artists that I wouldn't hear if I hadn't been doing this job. And this is one of these artists, so my patron sent it to me. Hey, Roberto. And this guy is from Peru. Por las noches no más se libra en puro llorar. So nice. Dicen que no comía, no más se libra en puro llorar. Juran que el mismo cielo se estremecía al oír su llanto. Interesting. I find it really interesting and the guy behind him with the violin, I think it's, yeah, the second violin also finds it interesting how he's using a really aspirate tone in, now, uh, Juan is an opera singer normally, kind of, um, but he is using an aspirate tone here, which isn't traditionally used in opera because you can't get that sound out. It can't be as loud um, and it doesn't really kind of punch through the orchestra. However, in this setting where it's acoustic, you can totally do that. And actually, it's really, really common in pop, in folk, in basically any other style apart from opera. And it's really cool how he's blending some different styles. Now, he is positioning his mouth, his vocal tract, towards an opera shape, although in some ways he isn't. Sometimes he's making it a little bit smaller. You'll hear when he gets to those opera moments and he really opens everything up and um, raises his soft palate, really makes an opera shape. But for now, he's doing a little bit of it. He's kind of moving his lips forward. That's a great singer's tip. It warms the sound. It elongates the vocal tract, makes a bigger space, a longer tube between your larynx and your lips, which makes it that little bit warmer. And he is nice and relaxed and using a little bit of that opera technique, but he's really going to in a, in a while. You'll hear the difference. It's so controlled. Can you hear how subtle he is with it? It's, he's not, he's switching between um, a kind of, I guess, normal singing shape and then really opening up into that opera space. Um, his breath support is generally, it's great. He is using a really consistent, relaxed breath. I mean, that control, the crescendos, the diminuendos are absolutely beautiful. Yeah, so good. And the interesting thing about him is that he learned to sing in his mum's pub. When singers and entertainers were off sick, he would fill in and he'd have to sing all sorts of songs from Elvis to opera. And so he really learned to sing in lots of different styles. People can get kind of stuck in a style and um, many opera singers find it really difficult to transfer that into different genres. And many, I mean, not everyone can sing opera. So... It's really interesting once you're, you get kind of stuck in a way of singing, you can get stuck that way. However, there are some people, like this guy, who can switch, who know their voice well enough that they know all the different shapes. And it's not necessarily a bad thing if you're like, right, this is my style of singing. Some people really specialize in one thing and get it perfect. And some people are really, really versatile. And he's definitely on the versatile edge. He kind of specializes and is versatile, which is 
kind of irritatingly wonderful. <laughs> it's so good. It's irritatingly good. Can you see when he's in this quieter bit, he's it sounds more speechy and his vocal tract is more in speech position. His mouth is a little bit wider, it's kind of where it would be when you speak, and when he gets to that opera sound, it really opens up rounder, those lips sometimes are forward. He is keeping those vowels really open. He's not doing like an ooh or an e, e. He's like ooh, e. Everything is really open. That e was a terrible shape for me. He'll, he will uh, show you how to do it properly. <laughs> I love those consonants so This is meant to be the sound of the morning dove. See, it's a little bit more open. This is a, a Mexican song and it really reminds me of um, some of the kind of shepherding songs that they have in Mexico where there's a lot of yodeling. I am... I know there's another word that people use in Mexico. Uh, I think it's falsete, which I guess comes from falsetto, but it's um, using a, a strong difference between your chest voice and your head voice, making a kind of crack between those registers. So he did that on purpose and then that held note Ugh, the breath support required for that, just allowing a, a string of breath. You've got a lovely relaxed in-breath and really controlling that out-breath. Breath support doesn't mean more breath, it means the right amount of breath, being able to control how much you're letting go of because, you know, if you let it all out at the start of a note like that, you'll never get to the end. <laughs> I loved 
the subtlety in that performance, how he was singing in a very folky style, and then he used the opera technique to make moments, to make moments that made you feel and made you go, wow, yeah, what a great performance, what a tasteful performance. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!